guys, welcome back. Uh, you know, I want to apologize for my absence. I was working on a four-part series of another video called What Would Jesusita Do? And um, the fourth video is actually 90% um, edited and pretty much ready to go. However, it's been put on hold. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen there. But anyway, I'm back. It's good to see you guys. You guys look great. Um, thank you for joining us today. Lots has happened between last time and now. Um, <clears throat> I've started a new job. I've been doing a lot of driving. Uh, I've been doing some, uh, driving some trucks and it's been quite a bit of fun. Any of you CDL drivers who want to offer me some advice or whatever, um, <clears throat> I'm open to it. That would be cool. Let me know. Um, I currently have my permit and I'll be testing probably within the next, I don't know, three weeks to a month. So, I've got a story for you. Here's what happened. I went as a volunteer to the Grand Canyon with a bunch of exchange students, and there were some hardcore avid hikers there that were uh, ready to go. So after a lot of driving, um, they, they verbally prepared us for the next morning that we were gonna do a 12 mile hike. So we got up bright and early that morning and we, um, <clears throat> they said, you know, get plenty of calories in, plenty of food, because this is going to be tough. What I did was, uh, I did exactly that, and I put a lot of calories in. Pretty much overdid it, and uh, we were getting ready to go on this hike, and I learned that there was another volunteer who was going to go on a less aggressive, uh, something that I could deal with better, because I hadn't been hiking in a very long time. And she said this would be a three mile hike. So I decided uh, that I'd ask her if I could join her instead. And uh, I thought it was gonna be really, really mellow, but it, was, it still turned out to be very tough. So of course in the Grand Canyon, you start out at the top and you go down. About halfway down, I realized that I had really overdone it on the calories. So I was incredibly bloated. So finally we got to the bottom of that area and we were on our way back up and I was just feeling so bloated and gassy and it, it was terrible. And uh, on the way back up, I, I was somewhat winded, but it was, it was more that I was just simply had to fart. So I told the girl that I had just barely met, uh, can you just go ahead of me? And she says, no, I'm going to wait for you. And I said, please, please, just yeah, give me, uh, give me, <clears throat> go like 20 feet ahead. And this was a problem because there was a lot of people coming down the trail and I had to wait to the right moments to fart and, and uh, you know, to avoid the embarrassment. And it, it was just absolutely, uh, absolutely horrible. It was... It was a very rough time, but eventually uh, got back to the top, and and uh, it, I guess it wasn't so bad after that. So that's a little story. Um, so <clears throat> that was a lesson learned for me. Don't overdo it on the cattle intake before a hike, I guess. But anything that you do at all that you're having a hard time with, if you keep doing it, it gets to the point where it's so not hard at all, right? It's totally true. I just hadn't been hiking in a long time, so I don't feel ashamed about that. So guys, um, here's something that I wanted to talk about. When it comes to weight loss, slow and steady wins the race every time. You see all these shows where people do extreme things and lose a lot of weight fast. A huge percentage of the time they're gonna have rebound, weight gain, and all that kind of stuff. So, slow and steady wins the race. I've got the slow part down. I'm just still working on the steady part. But I will get there because I don't want to let down my fans. I don't. And so I won't. You haven't let me down. I won't let you down. So keep coming back and watching. And we will see you next week. And I'll update you on everything.